on all of the latest developments straight from the IGN team. If it's at E3, it's coming to our stage. Hello, old friend. Today, we'll take you inside the Microsoft Theater for a look at the future of the Xbox One. Will we find out what's in store for the Halo universe? Hit the road with the latest groundbreaking Forza experience. And check out all the new games you'll be playing on the world's most powerful console, the Xbox One X. And later, stick around for complete coverage of Bethesda's media event. The company behind Fallout, Skyrim, and Wolfenstein is back with a ton of surprises. And a wild ride into the apocalypse with the over-the-top Rage 2. IGN's live coverage of E3 2018 starts right now. IGN Live at E3 2018. From first exclusive looks to hands-on demos, this is the best place to watch the big show. We're bringing you live coverage and breaking news from all the major players like Xbox, Sony, and Nintendo. Plus, we've got the Fortnite 50 v 50 Celebrity Pro-Am on top of that. Be sure to leave us your comments using the hashtag E3 2018 and tag us at IGN to let us know who you think should win our Game Show Award. But first, we've got the moment some of you, myself included, have waited years for. It's time to take a look at Soul Calibur 6. Let's welcome producer Motohiro Okubo and his translator, Mikey Mack. Now, I have to say, you guys, as both a huge Witcher fan and a huge Soul Calibur fan, I really want to ask, how did you guys get Geralt in the game? ゲストを入れたいっていうふうに思ってでまああのゲラルトに決めさせていただきました so, I mean, of course, I think fans have come to expect guest characters in the Soul Calibur franchise, and we always wanted to surprise our fans in many ways possible. And I think the Witcher universe had a lot in common, and the characters translated very nicely to the Soul Calibur universe. You guys have had some very cool guests across the years. We've even had Yoda. I never expected that one when it was announced. How do you pick who's going to be the next guest? ま、今お伝えしたようにま、ソルキャイバーの世界観にまずすごくやっぱりゲラルトがマッチしてると思いましたし、ま、あの、CG it's uh, really how assimilated they would be in the Soul Calibur universe. And really, when we expressed interest to, uh, to CD Projekt Red, they were very supportive of this venture and said, hey, let's make this work somehow. And then it kind of went from there. So obviously, we're looking at gameplay right now. It looks like Geralt's pretty quick. Uh, how long did it take you to kind of decide on what his moveset would be? So, I mean, there were a lot of ideas of how to bring him into the Soul Calibur franchise, and I think it really took about like three months to fully lock down his oh, wow. moveset. Yeah. さらにあの今回モーションキャプチャーはですねあの本作のウィッチャーのあのゲラルトのあのお実際にやってるアクターさんを日本にお呼びしてモーションキャプチャー撮ったりとかして。and even on the uh, mocap front, we went all out. We brought the, the mocap actor for Geralt in, in The Witcher to Japan in our studio, and then we mocapped him to make sure all the moves look exactly like his character should. Oh, that quality is so cool to hear. Um, you also have a stage from The Witcher that's in the game as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? ただ、ま、そのまんまやっぱり出しちゃうと、あの、ステージ、バトルのステージに、あの、うまく、そのまんま使えるところも、あの、あったんですけれども、ま、バトルのステージの設計上ですね、いろいろとこう変更して、それも
Again, CD Projekt was so supportive of this entire partnership. So when we said, hey, we want to make a stage, they provided a lot of assets that we can use. And they, they allowed us to really kind of rearrange things how we needed to in terms of a Soul Calibur stage. Because you can't just take the stage and drop it into mm -hmm. the game. I have to say, it is really funny seeing Geralt fight Geralt. <laughs> but to get a little bit broader, what can we expect from all of the characters or the game as a whole in terms of new battle mechanics? So a lot of the battle mechanics, we tried to take what they had established in previous iterations of the game and really bring it up to date and drop it into Soul Calibur 6. But of course, we did make a few adjustments and adaptations to, to bring it up to date. So where you would normally have pressed AA twice to just do a two combo, we would now have like a, a three combo available. So you could hit A even more. So there's a lot more to explore. Can you give me some examples of what the biggest changes are or ones that you think that uh, fans should really be excited about? Ma, so there have been a lot of changes, including uh, one called Reversal Edge, which is really kind of a cool little blocking defensive mechanic. And for the more advanced players, there is another one called Lethal Hit. So I mean, that's, that's you're going to have to go into the game and kind of explore for yourself. OK. Um, so can I ask, what is your personal favorite addition to Soul Calibur VI? あの、そうですね。so when I first answered this question during the, the very first interview that I had, uh, of course, only Sophie and Mitsurugi were shown, so I had to say Mitsurugi at the time. <laughs> but uh, more recently, we were showing Gro now and the dual-wielding character. And I think just the way his clothes kind of blow in the wind and that texture is really kind of fascinating for me. So I really like that seeing that on the screen. It's good physics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the community has actually responded to him pretty positively from what I've seen. Everyone seems really excited. So can you tell us a little ba a bit about him or about his backstory? どのキャラクターグロの so as you know, his character's got this really royal background, and we thought that that was very, very cool. So one assignment that we had during the development was that we were all watching movies to kind of pick and choose different actions or movement that we really liked. So in doing so, we really just cherry-picked things from different movies or, or shows uh, at the production team, myself included, and said, oh, this is how we want to create this character. Wow, I had no idea it would be that in depth. That's really cool. Um, when it comes to his fighting style, what other character do you think he's most like, or what style of players do you think will best play Grow? あの、基本的にはやっぱり1本 
So he uses what I call the double saber, which is, of course, it starts off as a single sword, and then he can split it into two. So that allows him to be a very well-rounded character. He's got a lot of kind of movements that he can jump in from a distance and attack and slash the opponent. So I think once you get used to the character's mechanics and how he plays around the field, it really will enable you to do a lot of different things. Very well-rounded. In playtesting with him, have you seen any characters he's really good against or any characters he's bad against? Like, I'm a Cervantes player. I'm very bad against Killick, is an example. I know. 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 So I'll be perfectly honest with you. I've kind of touched touched the build while I was still in development, a work in progress, and I don't personally know the matchups quite yet. I mean, I've <laughs> played them against different characters, but I think you need to really stress test yeah. it and then lab it if you want to figure out what the matchups are going to be. So, I mean, I would open up the floor to you guys. You know, it's yeah. going to be playable at E3. So, I mean, if you guys want to take a look at it and then you let us know what, yeah. what your findings are. I'm sure the community will have takes on that pretty quickly. We're paying close attention to what the community is saying. So, oh, cool. Definitely. Good to know. We'll make sure we keep you updated. <laughs> so, with the addition of both Gro and Geralt, how are you expecting the competitive scene to react to those two characters? E-sports uh, scene, how do you think those characters will react to those two characters? Of course, the part of the battle is a game of the fight. It's a high level of e-sports and e-sports. It's a very fun thing for everyone. Um, in terms of just the simple battle mechanics and matchups, we definitely aim to make it extremely competitive, and I know that requires a lot of adjustments and balancing. That's what I was going to ask next, is how much effort goes into balancing new characters when, you know, you're, you're adding a new moveset versus everyone else who's already existing in the franchise. That, that sounds really difficult. あの、そんなにですね、ゲームのバランスそのものっていうのは心配は個人的にはしてないです。あの、やっぱりもともとソルキャリバーのプレイヤーとして楽しんでたトッププレイヤーたちがプロジェクトに結構多く入ってたりと
The IGN app is the best way to stay up to the minute on what you love. No matter what you play, create the custom feed and filter what you want to watch. Live streams have never been easier to find. With the floating video player on iOS, you can keep watching the live stream as you read other news. World premiere trailers and the biggest games. Download the IGN app from the iOS or Android stores now. Sign up for notifications and we'll alert you the second news breaks. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. Welcome back to IGN Live at E3 2018, your hub for all things E3. Right now, we're here with Okubo-san from the Soul Calibur team and his translator, Mikey Mack. Now, I really wanted to ask you guys, have there been any major changes to some of the fan-favorite characters in the game? あの、ま、先ほどもちょっと話したんですけど、基本的には操作感そのものの、キャラクターのそのものの特性であったりとか、操作感っていうのはあの変えてないです。I mean, we kind of touched on this a little earlier as well, but we really wanted to make a big effort to not change the essence of a character too much and how they feel when you control them. だからもうバトルの手触りっていうのはもう本当にソウルキャリバーそのものを楽しんでいただけると思います。So I really think when you pick up the controller, it's going to feel like Soul Calibur immediately. So, sorry to cut you off. So anyone who has played all the games, you know, if I pick up Nightmare, I'm going to know exactly what his move set is. じゃあ、例えば私が泣いてもやすぐ拾ったら、あの、遊ぶ量な。いくつかやっぱりコマンドは変えていて、その中でも今回複雑なコマンドっていうのをあの、なくしています。やっぱりあの、操作によるえ、
I think one of the big challenges for Soul Calibur VI was that in, in five you really kind of achieved a very high level of swordsmanship and, and that sort of gameplay that, that players would experience. So taking taking that sort of high level of completion and polish and dropping it into six while also making it feel good as the players swing these weapons around. Just making those tweaks to, to, so it feels good as a package is kind of the, the challenge of Soul Calibur Six. Yeah, well, I was really excited when it was announced. I know a lot of people were, and you guys have slowly been rolling out the character announcements. How has the fan community reacted? How have you been seeing the reception? あの、非常にこう的に受け取っていただいてると思います。デザインについてはやっぱりあの時代そのものはそれキャリバーの最初の一番最初の時代に戻してるんですけれどもあのキャラクターデザインそのものはやっぱりそれを今この時代にどうか
あの今回も入ってはいますただこれもですね、あのー、発売までの間にどんなものになるのかっていうのは少しずつ明らかにしていきたいなというふうに思っています Again, I think the character creation aspect is a very important part of Soul Calibur. And that's about at all I'm at liberty to say right now. So it's an important part, and we focus on it. That you'll, you'll see more as, as time goes on. Killing me here. In <laughs>、um, Soul Calibur 4 is my favorite Soul Calibur.、Uh, and I spent a lot of time in the ascension and descension of the towers, and I really tied the character creation system into that to make sure that I had you know, the best character possible. Is stuff like that still going to be possible in character creation? And are we going to have an equivalent to. Tower ascension and descension. <laughs> <laughs> Hang tight. <laughs> yes. Very soon. All right, let's jump over to esports. What are you guys doing to support the competitive scene? I know, Sakyo, the Hanashi, only, Mazu, Kakto no Bubun, Tio, no, Wah, Mohonto, Ni, Shikari, to Skuri, Kon, De, Mas, Si, Jubun, Taisen, Kakto, Si, No, Naka, De, Mo, Ano, Tano, Shin, De, Tadaki, Mo, Ni, Anak, Kiri, Kon, Mas. So, We really, the battle system is it's intended to be a very fun experience, but at the same time, competitive. あの、ただ、この後、e-sports の中でソウルキャリバー自体がどのようにそれを扱われていくかっていうのは、やっぱり e-sports っていうのがそもそもあのユーザーベースというかコミュニティベースで、え、生まれたものですし、やっぱりコ
If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? <laughs> We're bringing the memes, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, <laughs> and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Before you find IGN's awesome content anywhere else online, you'll find it right at home on IGN.com. With IGN First, you'll get a sneak peek at never-before-seen gameplay, exclusive insights from developers, and a whole lot more. NVC Live brings you IGN's Nintendo podcast up close and personal. Engage with other viewers, ask our NBC hosts your burning questions, and become a part of the show. Don't miss out. Find everything first on IGN.com. Hey there! If you love video games, we have a lot in common. That's probably why you're watching IGN Live at E3. You know what else we probably have in common? Wanting to watch every press conference E3 has to offer, like Microsoft later today, Ubisoft and PlayStation on Monday, and the Nintendo Showcase and Treehouse Live on Tuesday. But first, let's find out what's been happening with Microsoft and the Xbox since last year's E3. This is it, Xbox One. When Microsoft first revealed the Xbox One, they were met with a skeptical audience. Talk of DRM undermined their every move. They needed to refocus on the thing that mattered most, the gamers. In 2017, Microsoft reignited the passion for the Xbox One by giving owners more. Power, compatibility, and craftsmanship. Xbox Play Anywhere allowed gamers the freedom to seamlessly hop between PC and console. The Netflix-like utility of its subscription-based Game Pass also scored big with gamers. And the upgraded Xbox One X proved to be the most powerful console on the market. But there's one thing that was missing from Microsoft in 2017. Simply put, exclusive games. Nintendo and Sony have been pretty consistent with fantastic first and third party exclusives over the past few years. This is an area Microsoft desperately needs to catch up in, and E3 is the perfect time to do just that. This E3, the Xbox has the potential to regain its footing with some AAA beasts that will make you happy you invested in the Xbox One X. Is this the year we see the return of Master Chief in a new Halo game? Will the Locust Horde wreak havoc on our senses in a new Gears of War? Are the rumors of Perfect Dark and Fable true? This E3, the Xbox is locked, the games are loaded. It's go time. And now to help me break down all things Xbox, the IGN Unlocked crew, Brandon Tyrell, Miranda Sanchez, and Ryan McCaffrey. First things first, guys, Halo 6, how are we going to see it? Yes. I hope so. <laughs> it is time. This is the longest we've ever gone without a Halo teaser of some kind. Uh, usually we get in year two between the three-year gaps between the mainline Halo games, we get the, you know, the, the tone piece, the trailer. Uh, we haven't had that. This is year three. It is time to see the next Halo. You know, I have faith. Like, that's good. Time is good sometimes, especially with what happened with Halo 5 and the reception with its story. Like, they really need to nail down Master Chief in this next one, and they really need to reveal him big, right? That's what I was going to say. For anyone watching who isn't familiar with kind of the timeline, what has happened since Halo 5? It's basically been that people were a little bit angry about the story being focused on Locke, really wanted to see more of the Chief, and it seems like 343 has kind of been reworking the story leading into 6. Yeah, I think we're going to see that Halo 6 announcement, and I think uh, 343 is going to walk it back and make it a very Chief-centric reveal, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's a big old trailer or a teaser of some sort, uh, or you know, having someone from 343 come out to talk about the tone of the, the game and where, uh, where we're going to find Chief now. Um, I think this is going to be the one, the, this is going to be the re reveal that reminds people like what Halo is. I would be very surprised if we see any other main characters besides <laughs> Master Chief. Yeah. Uh, at least on the good guy side. Yeah. What do you want to see? Uh, it's well, a hard question to answer, I know, because it's like <laughs> all of it? 
<laughs> I, I know. Um, the, the legendary ending of Halo 5 hinted at another Halo, so I think the, the big cool thing 6 could and probably will do that I'd love to see a, a, a hint at would be finally seeing everything in the sandbox at once. The Covenant, the Prometheans, mm. and the Flood. You know, what, what does a Flood-infected Promethean look like and fight uh, like? That's going to be pretty That's cool. terrifying. Yeah, yep. one of the great one of the great things about the Halo series is you have all these factions and you have all these different side uh, points of view, and they're all vying together. And um, you know, Bungie, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 343 does a really good job at taking all those factions and putting them together in in fun ways that you can engage with, you know? And I, I want to see more of that from this. And, of course, the story beats on it are, are just super important. Uh, and I really want to see them get back to that sort of Master Chief versus the universe vibe that we right. get. Yeah. And, and don't forget, too, this is going to be the first mainline Halo that can really be built <coughs> for the Xbox One X, or at least True. built Honestly. with it in mind. So we could see a potentially a, a really, you know, a nice step up in the in what Halo already has great presentation. Halo has already right. always looked great, sounded great, yeah. and that can get taken up uh, another notch here. Mm -hmm. One thing I really do want to see is an emphasis on co-op again. I mean, I, that really hurt. I, well, I think they learned that lesson. Yeah, yeah, so I hope that they maybe integrate that in some really unique way. Yeah, split screen for sure has got to be back. I doubt we'll necessarily see that today. Yeah. But. It'd be a weird teaser trailer. It's like in split screen the whole <laughs> yeah. time. That'd be really odd. But That'd be we, really we funny. you wanted this. So. <laughs> I think a good mention or a... a an idea of them saying, hey, we have listened to everything you have said about Halo 5 and yeah. we want to improve on that. Do you think we'll get a release date? I don't uh. think so. Uh, it seems like it's, it's, <laughs> it's at this point where Halo is in such a delicate place right now. <laughs> I think that they're going to take uh, as much time as they need to make sure that it delivers what I think everyone expects from a Halo game. I do think w the closest we'd get might be a season. A window. That's uh, what I'm expecting. A, a spring 2019 mm -hmm. Uh, because I don't think it'll be this year because we've yet to see anything. Yeah. I, agree. I can't that, imagine. That'd be like a Bethesda. They'd just be yeah. like, oh, no. <laughs> That's no, not Microsoft's thing. No. So. And one more thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a window, and I, and I yeah, I think this, this could be the first mainline Halo that doesn't ship in the holiday season, I you think know, so. September onwards. Right, I think we'll just get a year. Yeah. Just a year. Well, I hope it's next year. <laughs> Me too. Feel, sure hope so. Yeah, I feel like it'll be next year. How about multiplayer? What do you guys want from that? <clears throat> Well, the, Halo the, the, 5 was incredible. So. Yeah. No. Don't fix what ain't broken. That's yeah. part That's, of it. It, it. Halo 5 was a tale of two games to me. Uh, 5, in my opinion, has the strongest multiplayer mechanics since Halo 2. Uh, I know there are people that disagree with me on that. but betraying Halo 2 but, there, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> since Halo, yeah, not I know. stronger than nothing beats Halo 2. <laughs> but then on the single player side, it was, in my opinion, the weakest of yeah. the mainline games. So um, you, I, I just like to see big team battle be more... Um, you know, we didn't really get that addressed at launch with five. They added some to that after. So right. really, it's just building on the already very strong strengths of yeah. Halo Five in the seems multiplayer. Seems unlikely department. that we'll get a multiplayer teaser or anything like that today as well. Yeah, I think they really just need to nail down that narrative. I think so too. I, I agree. I think hey, we're working on it. It's gonna be great. Like that's all we need right now. Yeah. And I think that's all we'll get right now. How about Gears of War Five? This one seems very likely to me. Yeah. Yes, I think that's an easy introduction here, right? Because it's been a few years since we had four, and it was on a, left on a very big cliffhanger, and I think it's just an easy reveal for them to do, and a safe one, too, because we know it's coming, and we're all, at least I'm very excited about it, so. Yeah, Alana, I mean, you are probably our biggest Gears of War super fan in the office. Mm -hmm. You've done cosplay. You've played the games extensively. Where do you want to see five go <laughs> you know what i was thinking about this yesterday i was like what do i want from a gears of war trailer i just want one of those really depressing songs they always have <laughs> <laughs> they have their teasers are like it's like a weird cut with like ash yeah, falling and they just, yeah, they mean, yes the exactly yeah. they're so dramatic like that's what i want again <laughs> with the ending of four do you think that they would kind of skew toward that i felt like four is maybe a tad more lighthearted, even though it did touch on like heavy yeah. themes and i feel like the ending of four good. i guess we're just kind of dancing around in case anyone hasn't played it it's yeah for sure messed up i mean it is it's heavy. Yeah. It's alluding to something really neat and potentially that they will explore in five. Mm. You know, um, I've read all the comics and all the books and yeah. I, I really do find the humanity side of Gears of War really, really interesting and the stuff right. that happened, you know, when they tried to repopulate and all of that. And we did see a little bit of that in the first trailer for Gears 4, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we know, you know, they're basically out.
outcasts, the team that we're following now. And I, I think that concept is really interesting. Why they fit into society is really interesting. So that's why I want that depressing human I thought, trailer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought uh, Gears of War 4 did a, just a tremendous job of, of the, the generational handoff. Yes. Much right. like Star Wars uh, Episode 7, The Force Awakens. And, and I just, what I do hope though is I do love the new crew. I think they're great, but I, I hope we're not going to leave Marcus. Please don't uh, kill and, Marcus and, Phoenix. And, and, and the remaining think... members uh, of his team behind. So I, I hope, I hope we us. still have a, a joint sort of multi-generational uh, effort going on I think here. with how Gears of War 4 progressed, they made it clear that they don't want to do that. That yeah. this is a joint effort. This isn't yeah. them leaving the old generation behind. It's right. them working together to make the world better. Marcus can't go back to the farm yet. There's still more work <laughs> it's to tomatoes, be done. I mean, though. they destroyed it. <laughs> oh, my tomatoes. That was, that was my favorite thing, I think, of that entire game. Oh, I actually on. laughed I out loud so when much. I played through that part of the game. But, I mean, yeah, for me, it's just like, I just want a tease. And what I'm yeah. expecting, and we've spoken a little bit about this, is that they either open with Halo or Gears and close with Halo or Gears. So I think we'll, we'll have them, like, top and tail. And, and, you know, it's the most popular franchises that Microsoft have at this point. I'd be shocked if that's not. Now, and that's Gears 5 uh, has also generally been on... A the mainline games have been on a three-year development yeah. cycle, so that would suggest a the teaser this year, and I wonder if 2019 we might see Halo Oof. in the spring and Gears <laughs> of War 5 in the fall. You know what? I'm fine with it. Yeah? Yeah, Absolutely. I'm totally cool. I mean, hey, awesome. It worked great for Nintendo last yeah. year, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> that, I mean, that's great, but that is that is all your eggs in 2019, and then what <laughs> happens in 2020 or 2021? Well, that's what this conference needs to tell us. Let's, Hopefully, please. we'll have a ton more stuff, but I did want to talk about some of the rumors that have come out of Gears of War. We heard that there might be a Gears Battle Royale of some kind. We have heard a lot about Battle Royale. <laughs> we have year. already, six yeah. minutes into the first conference. <laughs> Crazy. Um, but we've also heard about a Gears of War-style RTS, like, uh, sorry, like a Halo Wars style, which I'm calling Gears of War Wars. Um, <laughs> yeah, Gears, colloquially. Gears of War Wars, I like yeah. it. Which I actually think, I didn't play Halo Wars, Ryan, you did. It's it's excellent. It's, it's really a, good. I mean, you know, Halo, as, as some may know, veteran fans may know, Halo was originally a strategy game. Mm -hmm. Like, way, way back. Uh, so it was inherently a good fit for it. But I think Gears could could work great like that, too. There's An XCOM-type turn-based yeah. thing. Great units, like definitely, for the Brew Max. What, what, yeah. what would the Hammer of Dawn look like? Right. Like, I'm actually super awesome. on board with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me awesome. too. Yeah. Especially if only one person can use it as, as a time at a time because it's satellite based, you know. Like yeah. one person gets the hammer of dawn yeah. at one point. You know, like I, I just feel like it would be really exciting. But I, how likely do you think that stuff is? I mean, a third person cover shooter, like to me, the idea of an XCOM style thing. I, I think. Did you just say XCOM? That sounds like a really awesome. Like it, it fits so perfectly because you're already hiding behind stuff, so you're moving your characters around, um, and these this whole world is just perfect for that. Mm -hmm. I totally agree, um, but I still think three Gears announcements in one conference. We know it's a little bit longer this year. It sounds like it's a longer conference, but yeah. it seems unlikely to me. Yeah, that seems like a lot just on Gears. Like, I know it's really popular, but that's also a lot for yeah. Gears 4. On like, the other hand, Microsoft, you know, this is the year, I think, that we've talked on Unlocked, our regular weekly show. They need to fire every bullet they have in the true. chamber this year. I'm, I'm so excited about this press conference this year. Like, you know, I'm excited every year, but I feel like this one, Brandon, we've spoken about this a bunch, mm -hmm. is like the one where they really have to show us that they are dedicated to exclusives and to games because they've been talking that big talk of like, yeah, we've shifted our focus. We're starting a new studio. Playground's got a new team. We know all of this stuff is happening. It's like, I want you to prove it to me this year. You yeah, know? That, that's yeah. right. I think every year there's the potential for surprises in every conference, right? But I don't know what it is, something in the air or whatever it is, but this feels <laughs> like Microsoft's year to open something up and just wow us, you know? They do have that new Santa Monica studio coming. They do have a lot of stuff coming. Um, so I want to see it all. <laughs> I totally agree. And it is time for a quick break, but we'll be right back with PUBG and later the Xbox E3 briefing. The IGN app is the best way to stay up to the minute on what you love. No matter what you play, create the custom feed and filter what you want to watch. Live streams have never been easier to find. With a floating video player on iOS, you can keep watching the live stream as you read other news. World premiere trailers and the biggest games. Download the IGN app from the iOS or Android stores now. Sign up for notifications and we'll alert you the second news breaks. 
Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're bringing the memes, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Before you find IGN's awesome content anywhere else online, you'll find it right at home on IGN.com. With IGN First, you'll get a sneak peek at never-before-seen gameplay, exclusive insights from developers, and a whole lot more. NVC Live brings you IGN's Nintendo podcast up close and personal. Engage with other viewers, ask our NVC hosts your burning questions, and become a part of the show. Don't miss out. Find everything first on IGN.com. E3 2018 is back. Thanks for sticking around, and you'll be glad you did, because up next, we've got the Xbox E3 briefing. But first, let's take a look at the franchise that put Battle Royale gaming on the map and took the Xbox One by a storm. This is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. So the last major update to PUBG on Xbox One was the addition of the Miramar map, that desert map. Uh, and then on PC, they've been testing a smaller map, which was originally called Savage and is now called Sonok. So that's been in testing, but uh, hasn't come out yet. It's easy to forget how big of a game PUBG still is because Fortnite is dominating this Battle Royale conversation right now. Everyone's making Battle Royale games. Call of Duty is making a Battle Royale mode. Uh, but... PUBG is still the most played game on Steam by far. It, it's not even close. I think what we can expect from PUBG at E3 this year is probably a map reveal. There's one that they've been talking about for a while set in the Baltic Sea. It's going to be probably a snowy map. I'm, I'm sure we'll get a glimpse of that at least. Uh, we'll probably also see a release date for Sonok, that smaller map. And maybe if we're getting really crazy here, we'll, uh, we'll see a PlayStation announcement PS4 on the Sony stage, but I think that's probably a year off still. A very polite man in a bow tie chat about a battle royale game. <laughs> Joining me once again, we have Brandon Tyrell, Miranda Sanchez, and Ryan to talk all things Xbox. Guys, it's really close. I'm very excited right now. Counting the minutes. Yeah. So the next thing that I want to talk about was Crackdown. Yeah. We, it just got delayed. Mm -hmm. Yes. We, we don't know when it's coming out, but I'm assuming we're definitely going to see it this year. Hopefully we see a lot of gameplay. Yeah, I mean, February 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, will it be on February 22nd? Same with Days with Gone and Anthem. Anthem. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah, the day's getting but, packed. But, uh, yeah, so February, which is, you know, whether, whether there's a sort of production time that's needed or, or not, probably smart because this, hot, this fall season is so packed. Crackdown 3, you know, it's, it's a single-platform title. Uh, why not just let it, just get it into early 2019 where there's a little, you know, there's fewer Red Deads in, uh, yeah. in February of 2019. Yeah. I agree. So I just can't wait to see what's going on with it. You know, we, we got to, I played single player for about 10 minutes just messing around in the sandbox and two player co-op, same thing, uh, behind closed doors last year. It, and it was fun. It didn't, you know, it didn't quite look the part uh, yeah. in, in, as sort of an Xbox One X flagship title, mm -hmm. which it was at the time uh, before the delay. But, you know, it was still fun. And so now, you know, I think everybody wants to see the, the vision of that cloud-based, Azure-powered wow. dis multiplayer destruction right. fulfilled. Will we see that in some form or another on the conference today? That's, that's a big question for me about Crackdown. Are you guys still excited about it? 
Um, I always expect another delay. Because yeah. I mean, that's kind of what yeah. I'm holding my breath for, right? Like, until they put a firm release date on that again. And, <laughs> you I'm, know, just... I'm still excited to see more gameplay. I've yeah. always really liked Crackdown. I also like all games of that style. Prototype stands for full. I really yeah. love that kind of superhero right. feeling in a sure. game. But I keep being like, what if it gets canceled? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I think at this point they can't, right? Like, right. they've just got to... They're figure it out. Get yes. They're pot committed. I think yeah. it'd be really nice to have an update and seeing like what <coughs> were they working on, like what exactly have they used all this ex extra time for? Mm -hmm. Like we know what the problems were, but it'd be kind of cool to see them be very transparent about that. Um, I was talking to some devs before about extra time with games and delays, and it, like my perception is, hey, you guys needed that time, and I'm sure you made the most of it. And they're like, well, sometimes like it was too much time, and we just you know maybe didn't need that. Interesting. And so like sometimes when you, you kind of get in your own head of th about things when you're creating stuff, right? I do want to say, like, so. props to Microsoft for letting them have yes. that extra time rather sure. than yeah. putting out a broken product. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd, just, I'd call myself cautiously optimistic right. on, on Crackdown 3. I can't, I can't honestly sit here and say I'm crazy pumped for it and I can't right. wait to see it. No. I hope today changes that. Yeah, me too. But, I, yeah, I mean, it, they've had plenty of time. We'll see what happens. But I just, yeah, I mean, the, the idea of, of actually, like, wrecking entire chunks of a, of, of a skyscraper-filled city. Heck yeah. If they can pull that off and make, make that fun in a multiplayer setting, that's great. We don't have anything like that. That would be yeah. wonderful. Brandon, how about you? Um, I'm, I'm in the same boat with Ryan. I can't sit here and say that I'm, I'm super pumped for Crackdown because the last time I saw, and actually played last year as well at, at E3, um, the last experience I had with Crackdown, I was a little underwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, and we just haven't seen much out of it. So um, I'm curious more than optimistic. I, I'm curious to see what they're doing. Uh, we know this series can be awesome. It has been before. Um, so as soon as the lights go up and the conference starts, I'm expecting a Crackdown trailer showing us those sweet multiplayer number crunching in the cloud as everything falls apart. The power um, of the cloud. <laughs> may, maybe some gameplay, but like we need a wow trailer. Like, do yeah. you, you remember driving the semi-truck into the skyscraper, the first reveal trailer? Yeah. Um, we need one of those. And I think going I into it, it, you know, not being overexcited is always a good idea for every conference, uh, yep. but I'm breaking my own rule because I'm really excited about the idea of Fable coming back. Ooh. Ooh. We don't know how likely this one is. It's just been rumored. Playground Games, the creators of Forza Horizon, right. actually um, have a separate team. They've been hiring for an open-world action RPG, which to me sounds like, hey, Fable. They are a UK studio, so they'll still have that Fable humor, hopefully. A rumor was recently as well that, that uh, there was some right. fairly strong circumstantial evidence that Microsoft is buying Playground Games, which would which would all but cement the idea that uh, yeah. that second team is going to be working on a Microsoft property, and that Microsoft property would be Fable. And uh, if, if Playground's second team can bring half the, the talent to Fable that they have brought to Forza Horizon, mm. it's going to be real good because Forza Horizon, which, by the way, I also expect to see today because yeah, it's their sure. year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Horizon is, is uh, you and I talk all the time, Alana, it's, it's the best car game period of the last at least five years. Completely agree. So if Fable, if, if Fable has anywhere near the level of, of talent involved, uh, it's, it has, stands a chance to really bring Fable back in a huge, significant, amazing way. Well, we know they hired people yeah, from, from pretty prolific studios who have a lot of experience working on open world games and open world RPGs, so I'm confident by that. It's just like, are they working on Fable? Are we going to see it today? Yeah. I, I'm trying not to get my hopes up. I'm so excited. But I what think, is it going to be? Well, I'm expecting if it is, they were hiring as recently as January, probably yeah. even sooner than that or closer than that, rather. Um, I'm, I'm expecting that if we do see it, we just see a tease, maybe like an Albion logo, like something related to like a color skate, a symbol. Like I don't really know, but I don't think there's gameplay ready for this. Yep, I think that would make a lot more sense, especially if they're still getting that team ready. And I have a lot of confidence in Playgrounds to do it right as well. If they do do this, which we all hope for, for sure. I think the one thing we will learn today, if there is indeed a Fable teaser, which I agree, I think there will be, because uh, if, if that studio purchase rumor is indeed yeah. accurate, you don't just say that at E3. You say, yeah. well, we bought them and they're doing Fable. Yeah. I think we get, at the very least, confirmation of whether it's Fable 4 or a reboot. I you know, think I think we'll see like a logo, you know, yeah. uh, some Fable-y music and a logo which will answer the question of Fable 4 or are we do are we going down the reboot route? Yeah. I think it is one of the few games I would really like a reboot for. Yeah, me too. I like all the Fable games. The Fable 1 is my favorite. The Lost Chapter specifically is my favorite. And I like that time period the most as well. So I'm hoping we can go back there, but... 
I don't we'll even, even get that much detail today. Yeah, not today. <laughs> I agree. If any. I, if it's I, even real. I agree, yeah. and I'm dating myself a little, but I actually remember the first trailer for the first Fable game. Project Ego. The Project oh, yeah. Ego. And yeah. it opened with shots, like uh, sweeping shots of Albion and that uh, fairy tale music that just puts you yeah. in the mood for that atmosphere. Uh, I, <sighs> that's what I want to see. That's that's the most I'm going to get my hopes up for today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave a thrill away comment that I also really want to see a perfect doc because that's vaguely been rumored, but we have no substantial yeah. evidence that that's happening either, so I'm just going to throw that out there. But one game that we are expecting to see this year, at the very least, and I'm thinking it's going to be on Microsoft stage, is Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. That is the next game from CD Projekt Red, who obviously made The Witcher 3, which is world-renowned as one of the Absolutely. best Absolutely. IGN's ever made. 2015 game of the year. It's an incredible game. Uh, do you guys think that it's likely that we'll see Cyberpunk on Xbox stage? The Witcher 3 obviously was on PS4, PC as well. The Witcher 2 was PC and 360. And then The Witcher 1 was uh, originally a PC game. So it's they, they have that relationship history yeah, back already. Forth, right. Sure. Uh, I, I would shake the magic eight ball and it would say yes. I think, you think so. I think it's. I think that is going to happen because uh, CD Projekt Red has has really been <laughs> been teasing a lot yeah. that they've yeah. got a they've got a presence at this year's E3 and uh, we've been waiting for Cyberpunk for actual years. We don't even now. know what it is. So uh, yeah. yeah, I yeah. think it is time and I think mm-hmm. Microsoft Stage is the place we will see it unveiled. But that's so amazing that a studio with based on their pedigree and a CGI trailer from three years ago <laughs> can create such fervor over something we've never seen, never played. They tweeted beep boop and everyone was like, ah! <laughs> I mean, all, we just know what they for can all we do. Know. Yeah. We have that confidence because yeah. we, they've proven to us that we should have that confidence. Which well, is crazy because the first Witcher game wasn't really that good. The Witcher 2 I really liked, but it was sort of niche, and then I, The Witcher 3 was just like, oh boy, yeah. you the, guys are good. You could see what they were doing yeah. with Witcher 3 in Witcher 2. Yeah. Like those, the seeds for that were mm-hmm. there. Um, but for all we know, their presence at E3 is an expansion for Gwent. So let's... <laughs> let's no, don't temper. say that. Don't, yeah, don't, don't break it. my heart that way. Let's temper our expectations. I do think if, if Cyberpunk is here, uh, or whatever it's called, uh, Microsoft will have it. I hope that we see some gameplay. It's time for that. I don't know when the game is going to come out. Um, I would think next year as well, but now I'm getting terrified of next year. Like, we thought this year was a big I know. deal. I know. Like, if that game gets a release date for next year as well, just please let it be later in the year. We're at that point in I the think- generation, though. You know, we saw this with the Xbox 360 generation, where towards this sort of latter, you know, we're what, four, five, five years in now, uh, where it's just, it's peak game efficiency. We have yeah. all these, not only tons of games, but great games. Developers have the handle on the hardware. Yep. Mm-hmm. They've, they've, they've dialed in whatever franchise they're working on. Uh, we're talking about a new IP here, but yeah, I mean, it's, we're, in that, we're in the zone, man, for the, for the, the best that we're going to see from this generation. It's all happening now. Right. I see Cyberpunk more as a fall game, for sure. I think they have... Yeah. Or a late year game. Like, it could be yeah. next year's Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, that's theory. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. I, hope, I always forget what fall is being. Oh, yeah, sorry, like, fall, all, like, not this year, but definitely. times a year, it's very confusing to me. Later on, for sure. Yeah, well, I, I wonder if a lot of the stuff we're going to see announced this year at every conference is going to be some of the last games we will see on this console generation full stop. This actually might be the first year that we'll see games that are announced for next-gen consoles, too, which is exciting. I think Fable's one of those games, personally. Probably. Do you think they'll announce it that way? No. No, I no, think no, it's, no. it's going to be like Breath of the Wild, right? Where things are announced, but then slowly re- you know what comes out next. Yeah. Next yeah, because I think uh, for this generation, it was Watch Dogs. Uh, was... Star Wars 1313 prior oh. to its oh. cancellation. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. But Watch Dogs was next generation consoles, and that was the year before launch. So it's, it's yes. something that, you know, I, I'm excited about even hearing, you know, hints of that. Not that I feel like I'm ready yet, but okay. It is time <laughs> for a quick break everyone but stick around because we're just moments away from the xbox e3 briefing i hope you're all as excited as i am Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. I think we can all agree that teamwork is vital to any important partnership. 
Thankfully, E3 Live 2018 is brought to you by Sicario Day of the Soldado in theaters June 29th. Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin are teaming up again to fight the cartels. And for one of them, it gets personal. Like friends turned into enemies personal. See what I mean in this exclusive clip. I'm turning you loose. How loose? No rules this time. The assignment is to kidnap Isabel, the daughter of a cartel leader. And try to make it look like another cartel is responsible for the kidnapping. It's your chance. Get even for your family. Alejandro's daughter was kidnapped and executed. And here he is kidnapping a young girl who's about the same age. I know who you are. You're the attorney whose family they killed. And now you hunt them. Adios. Not they. My father. She becomes a pawn in their chess game. We can't risk her falling into the wrong hands. Clean the scene. That relationship changes something in him. He starts to have compassion towards the daughter of his enemy. You gotta get rid of her. I can't do that. Good luck. Luck doesn't live on this side of the border. just minutes away from the Xbox conference to Brandon, Miranda, and Ryan. I'm really sorry if I have to cut any of you off because the conference is live. It could happen pretty much any second now. Yeah. But one thing that I wanted to ask you guys about, do you think Splinter Cell is going to show up? Please. Uh, oh, please. The answer there is, is no. sort of a no. Yeah. Please. I'm going to say no. I think so because of that Wildlands tease. Mm -hmm. That's that's what makes me like really hold out hope, and I love the franchise. Ryan, I know you're a huge fan. Big time. Uh, really nice. Yeah, I, I need more Michael Ironside. Uh, Sam Fisher in my life. All right, it's gotta I, have to, I have to cut you off oh. right now. Apparently, the conference is what? starting, so stay tuned for our post show right after this. Xbox E3 2018 briefing.
please welcome the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer. join Master Chief on his greatest adventure yet to save humanity. We are now at a moment of exceptional creativity in gaming. We can't wait to show you what Creativity Unleashed looks like for you. So to all the gamers around the world, across time zones and languages, to every single person watching us on TV and on Mixer, and to our largest ever live audience, the thousands of you with us right here in the Microsoft Theater. Welcome to E3 2018. I'd like to personally thank everyone who's joining us from FanFest. hundred percent of the proceeds from your FanFest tickets are going to Gamers Outreach. Thanks to you, kids in children's hospitals get to game with their friends in their favorite worlds. It's a great cause. That's what I appreciate most about gaming. Gaming brings us together. Gaming connects us. It inspires our truest cooperation. It creates some of our fondest memories of competition and our deepest conversations about the stories within games. Most of all, gaming fosters real community. It reaches across age, ability, race, gender, and geography. This is why I've always believed, and will always believe, that gaming is the great unifier. And what unifies us is our shared love of this art form. Legendary characters who captivate us, not just for 10 hours, but for 10, 20, 30 years. Bold stories that inspire the hero within us. Iconic worlds that are so richly imagined, we feel excitement in the air and danger on the seas. As gamers, we are at a momentous time where creative vision and cutting edge technology together are delivering the art form we love. So, for months, our teams and I have traveled the world, meeting developers from Japan to Poland, from the UK to the Ukraine, from big studios to single developers, creators who seize the full power and potential of Xbox One to express their most daring vision for games. Today, we've curated a bold showcase of their best work, and ours. 50 games. 18 titles with exclusivity. And 15 world premieres. Some will be first timers on this stage, and others will be first timers on any stage. All are imagined by the industry's greatest talents all demonstrate what true artisans can create. Mind-blowing art, immersive sound effects, breathtaking worlds. So let's jump in. Exclusive.
premiere. It's worth. Please welcome, from Bethesda Game Studios, Todd Howard. How's everybody doing? Oh, it's great to see everybody again. You know, actually, the Bethesda event is a few hours right after this across the street. And uh, Phil said to me, I'm having a few friends over. Why don't you uh, stop by? And look, I know Phil is really, really charming. Um, but damn, he's got a lot of friends. <laughs> and the good news is, you're our friends too. We've had an incredible 16-year history with Xbox going all the way back to the original with Morrowind. Now backwards compatible. And that goes all the way to bringing mods to consoles with Fallout 4. And now we are bringing the Fallout universe to Xbox Game Pass with Fallout 4 launching today. And hey, since we're here, we thought we'd give all of you an exclusive World premiere, first look at Fallout 76. Yes, Fallout 76 is a prequel to all the other games, and it is our biggest one yet. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. Set in the hills of West Virginia, you are one of the first to emerge into an untamed and very different wasteland.
300 years after our great nation began, we gather together to honor the completion of Vault 76. This sprawling underground shelter may have been engineered by Vault Tech, but it was built by you. So that if the bombs do come, our way of life will endure. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is all there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like the breeze. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home, country roads, take me home. For when the fighting has stopped and the fallout has settled, you must rebuild. Not just walls, not just buildings, but hearts and minds, and ultimately, America itself. In Vault 76, our future begins. World premiere. Spirit of my silence, I can hear you, but I'm afraid to be near you, and I don't know where to begin, and I don't know where to begin. It's just me, Captain Spirit. the flying fortress. Have you spotted the snowman, sir? Not yet. Keep me posted. Chris, breakfast. Okay, Dad. You're drinking beer? I don't need a lecture from my son. I always get picked last for the team at school, and they never throw the balls at me. They can't tell stories like you can, can they? No way. Start the launch. Too late! This time, you won't get away from me. Smile. Me too. Nobody's friend. You're probably gonna change the world. Just I hope so. I know so. But I really Captain Spirit is here! I think you're a vision. Captain Spirit is here! 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 Captain Spirit Captain Spirit is here! Captain Spirit is here! Captain Spirit is here! Captain Spirit is here! Welcome to Crackdown 3, the only game built like me. Big, beautiful, like a skyscraper, falling at your face. If you want to play on my level, follow my lead. Somebody give me my jam. It's all about getting the jump on the enemy. No building is too high. 60 stories up. Incoming! You gotta build up that raw power. Grab more. Grow more. Nama, nama, nama. Big. Bigger. Jackson! Then you need that fire power. Homing rocket gun. Bullseye. Vortex cannon. See ya! Graviton tether. Have you two met? And the most powerful weapon of all, me. And then I roll out. 
just like a boss. I can push off fools, pull up the side of a building, or even bust out my very own tank. Oh, yeah. Boom, shakalaka! Man, these bad guys just won't quit. They got mad, mad scientists, and mad a master plan. Here we go! The hits just keep on coming. <laughs> And the skies rained missiles, and the ground burned to ash, and the seas boiled, and people turned into shadows. So let us not fear the heretics at our door. Even with their iron steeds standing before us, stinking of machine oil, and shining its heretical light upon us, Remember, most of the country has been destroyed or occupied. Even those who speak our language might be enemies, by conviction or out of fear. We will not falter! Let us steel ourselves against them! For this is our hour of glory! Amen! Let's move out, Artyom. Blood, they will get it. We'll cross it no matter what those fanatics think. You got me, you damned heretic. 